Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Kingdom Hearts Rechain the Memories. In the last episode, we went through Neverland, and in this episode, we're going to be going through Agrabah for no other reason really than it was the first level that showed up on the level selection screen. But of course, we're not going to be getting any cutscenes here at the beginning of Agrabah, unfortunately. And I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I'm pretty sure that there's only one level near the end of Riku's story that gets any sort of, like, plot development. So it's kind of, like, it's kind of disappointing that every single level, almost, in Riku's story has you enter the level, not get any dialogue, cutscenes, even though I complained about, like, text dialogue and how I wished it was voice, at least there was some in Sora's story, unlike in Riku's story. So in Riku's story, we're going to enter the level, get nothing, run to the boss fight, fight a boss we've already fought in Sora's story, and then move on to the next level, where in between levels, we'll get a little bit of plot, which is actually really cool. But unfortunately, the actual levels are clearly just designed to extend the length of the game. But overall, I do like Riku's story because of the better... I feel like the combat is better and more fun. But overall, I feel like there's a little less substance. Anyway, rants aside, I did not start this episode expecting to go into a Kingdom Hearts Reaching of Memories rant. One thing that you might want to know is that, like those bizarre things over there, wherever, I guess that's where they sell things in Agrabah, those scenery plot things, or scenery props, I think is what I used to call them, those don't give you anything in Riku's story, because there are no Moogle points in Riku's story, which means there's no Moogle shops in Riku's story, I don't think I've mentioned that, and they also don't give you cards, like, you know I used to get fire cards and cure cards all the time, out of breaking barrels and stuff like that, you don't get cards like that in Riku's story, mainly because they give you a pre-made deck. So even that little bit is not here in Riku's story. But of course, we're going to be fighting the Genie Jafar fight again. In Riku's story, though, I feel like it's a little more annoying, mainly because you don't get as many cards when you fight Genie Jafar as you probably would have in your deck when you fought him with Sora. And the only reason that's a problem, because there are levels, or there are, yeah, levels that you get fewer cards than Agrabah, that's a problem in my opinion, because I think I might have mentioned this in Sora Story, but a lot of the times if you are locked on to an enemy, or that little outline of a lock-on where it's only yellow, half the time you don't jump upwards, and in a game where every little attack counts, because you only have a specific number of times you can attack before you have to wait again, every little attack counts. So when the game is kind of inconsistent, when it lets you jump up automatically, that makes it a little difficult because you waste cards and stuff like that, but I don't think this fight, regardless, is going to take that long. And it will really not take long at all if I get to Dark Riku mode, but at this rate, I think I might just take out Iago before I get to Dark Riku mode, even though I'm at 23 Dark Points. I don't know if I've exactly highlighted this or not, but you have to get to 30 Dark Points to go into Dark Riku mode. And then once you go into Dark Riku mode, you have a specific number of Dark Points available before you revert back into regular Riku mode, and those are defined or determined based on the number of Dark Point upgrades you've gotten throughout the game so far. And I don't know if I've really... I've, there's a lot of stuff I don't know if I've mentioned, because it has been a couple of days since I've done an episode, but if you get hit or if you get broken as Dark Riku, you lose Dark Points, and once you hit zero, you go back to regular. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out this floor right here. I just wanted to show you the map really quick. But I will see you guys when I am done grinding all of the enemies on this floor. Alright, it doesn't really mean much, but I thought I would show you the map just to show you that I've cleared out all the rooms. And for once, we're actually going to get a cutscene as soon as we go through this door. I take it you're Riku. Are you with Ansem? You are half correct. Let us say that he is not the Ansem with which you are familiar. He is Ansem, and he is not Ansem. 
Perhaps a nobody vest conveys the idea. Riddles were never my thing. Try again. He belongs to neither the light nor the dark, but walks the twilight between. Oh. <laughs> Catching on now? Oh, yes. You also stand in between the light and the darkness. It appears we have much in common. Maybe. Like you said, there really is darkness left inside of me. But so what? Darkness is my enemy. And so are you for reeking of that awful smell. Oh, -ho, so it's a fight you want. Very good. I shall take you on. Alright guys, here we go, we're fighting Vexen, and the first thing I like to do is play the Dragon Maleficent card. I think I've been doing this all along, but it's become such a habit that I just forgot to mention it. If I haven't mentioned it, basically what it does is, what I've seen it described as anyway, it lowers your reload speed and raises your attack power. But reload speed to me, that describes the amount of time it takes you to reload like the 1, 2, 3 thing that was existent in Sora's storyline. If that's not what reload speed is, I have no idea what it is, unless it refers to your recovery time between attacks, but I don't think that's what it refers to. But basically, because Riku doesn't even have that 1, 2, 3 reload thing, it's just a tap of the button on that black card, it seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like a free attack upgrade. Now, that's kind of unfortunate that I lost my dark mode and even more unfortunate that i lost or that i got frozen there and that freeze attack was a lot more devastating in sora's storyline than it is in riku's storyline but as far as any other tactics i have for fighting vexen just like in sora's storyline you don't want to attack willy-nilly mainly because he has that ice shield and that ice shield breaks pretty much all of your cards or guards against all of your cards so what you really want to do is just wait until you get a card that can break whatever card he has that way he'll put down the shield first of all and you'll also get points towards turning into dark riku and once you turn into dark riku especially it seems like in these organization fights you're pretty much gonna win but overall vexen is probably the hardest fought boss we've fought so far but he's really not that hard in the whole grand scheme of things but of course, yet another cutscene will be coming up after this. <laughs> I find coursing through you there is a darkness of formidable power growing, well worth the trouble of aggravating you. All this excitement has provided me with invaluable data. What? Many thanks, Riku. It was a trick all along. I really like that cutscene in particular, mainly because it shows a connection between Riku's storyline and Sora's storyline, more of a connection, I should say, than we've seen up to this point so far. Because up to this point, it's apparent that the Riku replica, which was a main enemy in Sora's storyline, hasn't existed, and it would not have existed unless Vexen fought Riku and gathered data from him, or whatever he was talking about. And that kind of reminds me of a Dragon Ball Z theme. I'm pretty sure I'm getting this right, but I'm pretty sure that Dr. Jiro watched Goku fight, or something like that, so that he was able to create the androids, which is a whole lot, or is very similar to the situation we're seeing here, and I only bring that up because I, every time I think of a Dragon Ball Z reference, it has to go into the episode. But I want to thank you guys for watching this episode of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts, Reaching the Memories, and I hope to see you guys back for the next episode.